In this tutorial, I want to talk a little bit about how can we reference other objects attributes inside our other objects, wrangle nodes. So let's say we have this sphere and we want for it to pick up the same color as this cube. So what we can do, but before, before that, let's take a look at a simple example. So many times when you open up the Houdini documentation, you will see that there's many of these commands in Vex, which basically the command's name and then in brackets geometry so but so in geometry usually if you're using attribute wrangle it's going to be zero the zero in brackets is basically referencing this very node that's in, that's connected to it so it's always going to be zero so in by default it's going to be the first dot inside the attribute wrangle so you actually can just unlock it so like i have unlocked it and you can actually just swap around. You can see that in one there's a geometry to process with wrangle. And you can just swap this around, whatever. And then go back. You can see now it's not working. But it's still it still is zero. So if you just put it inside a second one, you can see it's all it's already working. So usually it's just a zero and you just don't have to worry if you just want the same attributes that you are connected to so but how can we actually reference other objects so in here I'm just saying how many primitives are inside this inside this sphere how many faces so if you take a look at this and you go to the primitives from 0 to 79 so included with 0 that's 80 so you see I just created the attribute that spits out how many faces there and of course they're 80 so so let's say what if I want for this attribute to be driven by the faces that's how many faces are in this cube so what you can do I can basically just have to delete the zero and all of this command has to be also in brackets so put down brackets already and then in quotes start writing op then you colon two dots slash I don't really know what's called it's basically slash I think it's forward slash so basically what we are now selling go outside of this attribute wrangle node and since we know that our node is inside here so we just have to now reference it color color one and the, and then with the quotes and the quotes and we are basically done now just go back you can see we are now picking up the six how many faces are inside this cube and you see and also remember to run over the primitives because we do want want primitive numbers number of primitive faces so make sure you have primitives so whatever you want to run over it so what's cool about this also that you can reference it outside this network so let's say we want let's reference the geo and box one so all you have to do is just delete this so we want to go outside this node so then we want to again go outside this node so now we are at the obj level and now we know that our node that we want to pick up values are inside the geo2 so geo2 and then we want it's actually box one like that you can see we are picking up the 54 faces so that's pretty cool let's take a look at another example for us to actually color the object there's some pretty cool things you can do so let's say i want to call it the same color as green so if you take a look at the point and you hover it and also alt f1 you see that in point you have to give the geometry then the attribute name that you want to take it what kind of attributes you want so we want to cd and then the point number so that's three so what you can do actually so let's say you have this box and let's color it 4 and 7 let's duplicate this color and put it inside here let's pick these two and let's color it completely different color so that is going to be red so what you can actually do only changing this point number so we know that red is 4 and 7 so let's make it 4 you can see 
I screw it's color one, so we went to the newest in color three. Now you can see it's colored red. If you go back to something like one, it's now green. And what's cool about this? Actually, it just put down at pt num, and it's going to color the same points at the same color. So you know, four and seven is red. So these are red. These are green. And since we have more points here than there's actually on the box, so that's going to be all black. So that's cool. How can you actually color them? With PT num, so it's going to run over the every point and assign color to it. Another cool way we can use this referencing is with functions. So let's just create a single function. Let's say my number, that's going to be our function. And then this function is going to be, let's say, we want to get the C, for now it's 0. Then we want to return. C and the C will be get from let's say number of points of the whatever we're gonna put it inside so double brackets in quotes op colon dot dot slash and let's say color three this like that so we have one problem so let's take a look it doesn't like the C so we missed this one like that so to see our value just put down a test equals my number and the empty brackets like that see now it's eight so let's say we want whatever goes inside this, let's maybe just divide it by 2. Now it's 4. What's cool about this, we can just, before this, we can just create the, another box. Let's make sure it's actually more, more sides. Let's put on the switch. How about this? Now, if we... Let's pin, let's pin this. Now if we switch, you can see it's actually automatically changing. Another command that goes hand in hand with this op operation is op full path. So you can see in the help, you can see it basically gives the, if you give the relative path to the node, it's gonna give back a full path. So relative is basically all these points that we're giving. So we're not giving actual name. We're just saying, hey, it's somewhere there or it's somewhere there. So what I'm going to do to show how it works, I'm going to do is just print out a string attribute. So s at my location equals. So then we just have to point that op full path. Then in quotations. In a help, you can see that it says so. If you in in if you put it in quotes one dot, it's gonna full path of the current node being evaluated. So basically the node. So let's do that and check out what it's going to print out. So with one dot, let's delete all of these like that. So you can see in attribute, it's printed out our full location of our attribute triangle node that we are using. Something maybe more useful would be assigning textures to the to the object. So what I have in, in image network, I have imported one file. So let's go back to OBJ and now let's try to reference it to our texture map. So what we, it is a little bit differently. So we just cannot use the relative path because for us we actually need full pad so that's where op full pad comes in so I start is the same so op colon and the back quote then we just have to use op full pad and in the brackets let's put down uh, quotes and the quotes let's start referencing 
our pad. So you can see what's nice about it, it's actually going to give everything that's inside that directory. So we want to go to the image, image one, and that's the one that I reference it. Then close it down with quotes. And remember after the bucket, just put down a back quote also. And I think that should be it. You can see we have successfully referenced it our texture map from the OBJ from the image network this noise to our OBJs. So I think that's pretty useful. I think that's it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something today from this video and hope you see you next time. Take care.